Today we're diving into one of the most underrated Mr. Olympia competitions of all time, the 2012 Showdown. This event featured an epic battle between two of the best bodybuilders ever, Phil Heath and Kai Green. This was the first installment of their iconic Mr. Olympia trilogy, and many believe it was the best. Both athletes were at the peak of their physiques, delivering a spectacle that fans still talk about today. Phil Heath is often celebrated for his 2011 and 2013 Mr. Olympia wins, but his 2012 form was just as impressive. He was big, conditioned, and maintained a tight, controlled midsection across all three years. The differences between these three years were so minor that it comes down to nitpicking to declare a best among them. Kai Green, on the other hand, was at his absolute best in 2012. While he brought more size in 2014 and 2016, he never matched the polish and midsection control he displayed in 2012. Both Heath and Green at their best are undoubtedly among the top 5 physiques in bodybuilding history. For fans of legends like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Lee Haney and other old-school icons, it's hard to imagine them holding their own against these modern titans. From a purely bodybuilding perspective, they would be obliterated. In my opinion, the ultimate top 5 bodybuilders of all time, showcasing their best physiques, are Dorian Yates, Ronnie Coleman, Jay Cutler, Phil Heath and Kai Green. You can debate the order, but these five stand unmatched. The 2012 Mr. Olympia stands out for me because it brought together two of the best physiques in history for a legendary battle. Phil Heath emerged victorious, claiming his second Mr. Olympia title. For Kai Green, this was his first of three runner-up finishes all behind the same formidable Phil Heath. This rivalry, especially in the modern era, is unparalleled in the sport. Next, I want to analyze the 8 mandatory poses with you guys to see if there could have been a different outcome to this event. We begin, as always, with the front double biceps. Now, this pose could go to Phil Heath for a lot of reasons. The more well-rounded guns with the superior forearms and long-headed biceps and the details and muscle separation through the arms overall. It could also be argued that Phil has a tighter midsection, however, I would go with Kai in this pose. Despite his wider waist due to his wider structure, his V taper is superior to Phil's. I also believe that having longer limbs as Kai does helps with the overall flow in this pose. And also because of Kai's freaky peaky biceps. Short headed biceps will always catch the eye better than long headed ones. Like I said, there could be arguments for Phil in this pose, but I would go with Kai. The front lat spread pose is a little more obvious. Kai's structural advantage becomes very obvious in this pose. There are several reasons why a structure like Kai's will always have the advantage in this pose. First and most important is the clavicle width. Shoulder width is key in this pose and Kai destroys Phil when it comes to width. Then, having longer arms like Kai is another advantage in this pose. Longer and thinner arms expose the lats more, the lats being the other key component besides overall width in this pose. Yes, having smaller arms can be an advantage in certain poses and Kai takes advantage of this big time in this pose. Now Phil has better arms and shoulders but these aspects are secondary in this pose so another win for the predator, Kai Green. Since Kai already has a 2 point advantage, let's check out if there are any poses where Phil is undisputedly winning and leave the decisive tight poses for the end. So Phil's more dominant win and probably the most one sided mandatory pose in the entire comparison has to be the most muscular. This is the one pose where Kai Green is out of the discussion, Phil's round shoulders are too much for Kai and also Phil's long headed biceps become an advantage from this angle. Despite Kai's great chest development, good midsection and world class lower body, the guns are simply the main focal point in this pose and the differences are too big in Phil's favor so the most muscular goes to Phil. 
The other pose where Kai was never beating Phil was the side triceps. Now, don't get me wrong, Kai's pose was world class, having arguably an even better side leg than Phil, who already has one of the best side legs of all time, and also Kai having a world class display and a beautifully detailed and deeply cut lateral head of the triceps. Phil just has a strong answer for every Kai Green strong pose in this pose and the strongest of all being the actual triceps. Phil's lateral head was just as detailed and separated as Kai's, but it was twice the size. Also, Phil's superior shoulders count too in this one, so overall this is another win for the gift, making the score 2-2 two, two now, 2 for Kai and 2 for Phil so far. 4 poses gone, 4 more to go, you know I'll leave the back poses for the end so let's check out the other remaining 2 poses. First, let's see the other side pose, the side chest. First of all, the outer quad of Kai Green is out of this world, I didn't remember it being so freaking dominant. Also Kai's chest seems to be slightly bigger but they're pretty close. The difference in this pose is made again by Phil's arm dominance. Whether you agree with it or not, the side chest pose is pretty much a side most muscular in the modern era of bodybuilding and in the most muscular, Phil just beats Kai and it's not only about the guns, Phil's chest and side leg are almost just as good as Kai's while his shoulders, biceps, triceps and forearms are way superior to Kai's. This is the argument behind my decision of giving Phil another pose. So after losing 2 poses, Phil came back and won 3 poses, thus making the score 3-2 in his favor. Before we go to the back poses, we still have to look at the abs and thighs where I believe Kai has the advantage over Phil. He may be blockier than Phil but he simply has the better abs, having an actual 6 pack and better thighs than Phil Heat. Now, both of them have world class wheels, I didn't mention the wheels too much in this comparison because both are world class and the differences are minimal thus not impacting too much the result in each pose, however I have to talk about them in a pose that is called abs and thighs. Phil has indeed the more separated quads but Kai's are bigger and have that unique feathering to the outer quads that give him the freak factor. Combined with the superior abs, this pose goes to the predator, making the score 3-3 before we look at the back poses, the back being the best body part for both. That's why this is my favorite Meister Olympia battle of all time. Back double biceps. These are the two best back double biceps poses of all time, outside of Dorian and Ronnie and it's hard to call this one. They are both strong but quite different in their own way. First, Phil has the more complete arms again, but Kai's peaky biceps are a great response. Phil has the bigger and better traps, but Kai has the bigger and better lats. The lower body will not tip the scale in anyone's favor because both of them look great, without any flaws really. Phil has the more straighted glutes, but Kai's hams are superior. We know Phil has the long headed calves but Kai's calves are just as good even though they insert higher on the bone. You cannot judge this pose without being unfair to someone no matter your call. This is the closest you can get to a draw in a pose probably. Let's check out the other back pose and get back to this one for the conclusion of the comparison. Back, lat, spread. Now if you remember. For the front lat spread, we stated the importance of overall width and the same thing goes for this other lat spread pose. Kai Green wins this aspect against Phil and this could be used as an argument for any Kai fan, however, this is just not the whole story of this pose. Kai had a weaker link in his back development and that is the traps. And not only are his traps smaller than Phil's, the overall muscle density and separation in the middle of the back for Kai is a weak point, not necessarily only against Phil, but in general, his lat spread pose from the back was never as good as his back double. On the other hand, Phil may be narrower, but that armor-like looking back is simply too much for Kai. I don't think that this is even a debate. Phil Heath wins this pose rather convincingly making the score 4-3 in his favor. 
Now, if we go back to the back double, even if we give the back double to Kai, it remains that this pose could very well go to Phil as well, a thing we cannot say about the other back pose. So I believe this is the key to this matchup, this is where Phil had Kai beat. Granted, let's say we give the back double to Kai, the score indeed becomes 4-4. Four, four. If we take a look again at all the poses, Kai won. The front double, even the front lat spread, and the abs and thighs, and especially the back double, they all could go to feel as well. At least we have to admit, it's pretty tight. But if we take a look at Phil's wins, maybe not the side chest necessarily, but the back lat spread, the side triceps, and the most muscular, all three of these last poses were no-brainers, were Phil Heath all day. If we use the analytical comparison template, this would have been obvious with the point system. Furthermore, I believe Phil had an advantage in the four quarter turns as well. Let's say Kai wins the front relax because of the width, but Phil would win both side relaxed just as he won the side chest and the back relaxed, which very much looks like the back lat spread. So yes, even though this was a tight matchup, I believe that the official result with Phil winning was the correct one that day.